Cat, it's Maximus here. Got a table full of fans. This is just going to try to be a quicker video just about fan sizes. And one of the reasons I'm making a series of videos about these electronic fans, you can't even fit all the fans in the frame, is this is about the sizes. The nice thing about these uh, you know, DC brushless fans, one of the really big deals actually, is that you can do whatever project or have whatever you're uh, you're doing with one of the fans, not just replacing some server or computer fan or fan and a PLC control at a sawmill, but any kind of, you know, custom projects, ventilation fans, that kind of stuff, is you can design your project how you want and then get a fan that will meet your needs for amount of airflow for a particular size and shape of hole that you have. And no, my videos aren't covering all, there's lots of awesome brands of fans out there. Uh, somebody had mentioned uh, in a comment about Noctua fans, and those are excellent fans, uh, which do have very high mean time. Some of them, you know, hitting 15 year mean time between failure. I did look that up. The mean time between failure, like on Delta fans, is 90%, actually. The same thing on, like, Nidec. That means 9 out of 10 fans will last at least as long as the, like, for this fan, 70,000 hours. 9 out of 10 of those fans will actually last at least 70,000 hours. You also have to remember, like, versus a, like a Noctua fan, which are really nice and meant to move a lot of air quietly and efficiently, um, they're not targeting quite the same. I mean, there is some overlap, but, like, companies like Delta and NIDAC also target extreme high-end. San Ace, all those guys really uh, have fans that are uh, extreme power, which things like Noctua doesn't. Um, they don't make multi-hundred CFM fans or you know, super high power like this is an 80 millimeter fan. And this thing moves 105 cubic feet of air a minute out of an 80 millimeter hole, which is three and a half inches. Anyway, uh, let's get through the sizes and we'll get some of these smaller ones. We have just tons of sizes here. We have these tiny little fans. You can see that uh, my th <laughs> fingers are doing better. But this is like the size of my thumb. This is a little one inch 25 millimeter fan. Uh, this is literally a 1 watt fan, 0.2 volts or 0.2 amps at 5 volts, little pancake fan, but see, uh, they make microscopic little computer fans. This actually came out of an old CD burner. We've got, whoop, uh, 30 millimeter fans, and this little Nidec here, we've got super thin 40 millimeter fans. There's a wide range, a really wide range of the 40 millimeter, because that's, uh, about the size of many electronic and computer components uh, really t lend themselves to this particular size. So this is a super small one. When they get this thin, you can see that they actually stamp uh, the rotor out of steel instead of actually being molded in plastic. Then we have here a uh, standard thickness, which would be uh, 25 millimeter. Then we have these 38 millimeter. This is a really high performance. This little fan right here moves 25 cubic feet of air a minute uh, out of a 40 millimeter hole, about one and a half inches, but it spins at 13,000 RPM. So it's quite loud. But if you want to move a decent amount of air out of a small orifice, that's the sacrifice you make. Uh, and they just keep on getting thicker and thicker. Each one of these fans back here is just a little bit thicker. We have contra-rotating fans, which is what you have to step up to uh, to really start moving even more air. So these are kind of like little jet engines where the, back, the front fan spins one direction and the back fan spins the other direction. There's little veins so they uh, help each other out. The front fan spins a little slower than the back fan. And then they have this odd shape, which is actually 40 by 50 millimeter. And that's a larger one. This is just a smaller, a little bit lower performance version. We have a nice little Sunin, which is just even taller still. And then we have these big 53s, like this fan. This is a really powerful San Ace. This little fan, this is how much fan that you need just to move 30 cubic feet of air a minute through a 1.5 inch or 40 millimeter hole. And this thing spins at like 15,000 RPM. Super high quality because it has the uh, the brass centers which provides uh, just a bit more mass and vibration dampening. These are really nice, but they're extremely loud. But that's the kind of the purpose of a lot of the videos is just exploring these high-performance fans where, you know, how do I move a lot of air out of a tiny hole? You know, you have to get one of these kind of fans. And these aren't cheap. These things are like 30 bucks or something, which is the other reason it kind of, uh, you know, attracted me to these fans when I started looking them up. 
And uh, once again, I'll really mention uh, the reason I talk about Delta so much is not only they're basically number one in the world for these fans, but they really are on it uh, with getting their information out there, making sure all these websites and manufacturers have all the base specifications. I have all these brands of fans here, and it's next to impossible to really find data sheets on them. Um, it really is a shame that Nidex and the Manibas and NMBs and ABCs all are just next to impossible to find the data sheets. It's really frustrating. And then with Delta fans, every Delta fan I've ever typed in the model number, I've been able to find the data sheet. So it's really nice because I know exactly what kind of, what fan I have and don't have to guesstimate based off of all these other fans. I have to guesstimate their flow and performance based on fans that I do know the stats on. And this is just another 40 millimeter, and then you get up to 60 millimeters, and that's the deal is you get up to uh, diameter, and then you can just get various thicknesses for different levels of performance. And uh, the next video I'll do quickly will be involving a lot of these same fans, but it's just to talk a little bit about the vein or the, the aerodynamic design of these fans. So many of these fans, there's just a million different designs out there, and they're all extremely complicated. Every one of these fans has been modeled and computer fluid dynamics and they keep on especially delta keeps on experimenting then we have our standard like the standard size computer fan is known as an 80 millimeter and this is what just a standard grade version would be and of course this is uh on the extreme high end actually this fan right here this delta there's the part number tfb 0812 uhe that actually stands for uh ultra high end uh, and it is pretty ultra. When this, at least when this fan came out, I don't know if it's true still to this day, but when this fan was released, it was the highest flow 80 millimeter fan available on the market, period, at 106 cubic feet of air a minute. Uh, really a pretty amazing fan. This is also a very amazing fan. These were actually in the early Core 2 Duo and Core 2 Quad computer systems. These were the main fan in those Dells. That's how I ended up you know, finding so many of these fans uh, at computer recycling centers. We can even see that it has a Dell part number on there. But this is a hundred, this is 92 millimeters, so only 12 millimeters bigger than this one. And this thing moves 160 cubic feet of air a minute. Uh, definitely pretty impressive, but of course very noisy. And this was also the first model of fan that I encountered that had an electric brake. And you know you're dealing with high performance fans when they have electric brakes when you turn them off right on up through the 120 and so for sizes this is a three and an eighth inch on the 80 millimeter just for my three and a half inches for the 92 millimeter excuse me that would be three and three quarter inches and then we move up to the 120 millimeter which is the standard of large fan size and that would also be about four and three quarter inches uh, this is also an extreme high performance fan we can see the size of it based on my hand um, you know, four and three quarter inch fan, about the size of a hole for a recessed light in the ceiling. Um, and this thing moves 250 cubic feet of air a minute. It doesn't do it quietly. It's like 65 decibels. But once again, the point of this video isn't just, or my videos is like quietness. This is, you know, awesome fans, high performance, you know, because they're kind of neat. You know, you can always get quiet, kind of simple fans, but it's much harder to get uh, extreme performance fans and these aren't like drones drones have of course those motors are extremely powerful they make aircraft fly um, but it's a kind of a different application versus these fans which we're trying to move as much air as possible within a given noise limit and doing it as efficiently as possible and I can also tell you the drone electric airplane motors are not rated for you know, 30, 40, 50, 70, or 120,000 hours of runtime. And that's the thing to remember. All this runtime is these fans running full bore, like this thing's at 120 millimeter, and it runs at 6,000 RPM, um, without turning off, just continuously for years and years, like, you know, like Noctua's. But once again, this thing is running for six or seven years, moving 250 cubic feet of air a minute. Then we have ones like this where they try to mitigate noise. This is a 130 millimeter, so it's the next step up. Uh, and this is not a, a bad fan. It's a little bit quieter while still moving around 200 cubic feet of air a minute. It moves less than this, even though it's a little bigger. Then we have like the big boys. Now this is a big ABC. 
I've always liked ABC because they their sales. Uh, all these fan manufacturers do make super cheap sleeve bearing fans, but all of them just push people push their uh, suppliers and push their customers away from them because they're just so unreliable. And you kind of know that ABC is a good brand. And every ABC fan I've ever found has either been a ball bearing or a hydraulic bearing. Hydraulic bearing is actually the compromise between uh, just super simple, simple sleeve bearing and full on ball bearing. They do run smoothly, but they end up lasting about a third or 30% less time. And so, yes, they do make really awesome, uh, huge computer fans. They even make ones that are 200 millimeters. And this is a fan that moves about the same amount of air as this Delta, 250 cubic feet a minute, but at a whole lot less noise. And I should mention, I'll demonstrate a few of these fans, but uh, you do want to get uh, screens for fans, especially these high-performance ones. They're dangerous, and you don't want debris to get in there because they'll just blow themselves up. And these metal wire ones are always the best. Decades ago, they did a lot of tests of noise and air and airflow, and nothing beats the steel round wire grills. And they're nice because they're steel. They actually offer a, you know, a reasonable level of protection. And then we have like some of the biggest ones. This is actually a cheesy 12-volt fan, but these are 172 by 150 millimeter. And that's about as big as you'll see. When you need larger fans than this, then... Um, you kind of you have the opportunity to go you're getting big enough to where you can use powerful enough induction motors and you then you just run them off 120 volts the problem with induction motors is when they get to these smaller sizes um you just can't deploy enough power you have to use the dc brushless so that's why all these fans are you know in the smaller size range as soon as you get big enough then you can use induction type ac motors and then, of course, we have various different styles of uh, blower fans here. Some of these are quite high performance. The advantage to a blower fan is for the size of the case, they don't move quite as much air. But they do have a lot of pressure differential, especially a lot of vacuum because they are centrifugal type. Uh, and the frequency of the noise uh, is much lower, so they aren't quite... Even though they may be as loud, they don't seem quite as loud as many of these other fans because the way these blades chop versus the way these fine blades work and because the air is actually changing direction 90 degrees. And they even make some special ones like this. Like this is designed to fit a 120 millimeter form factor, but just be a squirrel cage fan. Anyway, that was kind of the end of the discussion, just talking about sizes and shapes of fans, a little bit of extra information. And so somebody can find a video and say, you know, I wish, I wonder if they make a fan like this or like that. They can find this video and say, oh yeah, okay, I can go hunt around and find a, a fan that's exactly what I need. And uh, can move either as much air or as little air as I want it to. You know, a lot of people don't know that there's actually just this huge array of fans. Anyway, uh, I'm going to spend just a minute, probably a minute or two, just giving a demonstration. Can have a fan video without actually demonstrating some fans. This is a four wire fan, and for some, and I mentioned before, they'll run with just plugging in the black and red uh, and giving them 12 volts because the it these four wire fans are computer speed controlled. But if they don't detect the computer, they just default to full power. Makes them great for working on projects, or if you do want to control them, they use a pulse width modulator, and you can get little. Uh, Controllers for fans. These aren't for four wire, but these are for three wire fans. You can get little in line speed controllers, or you can get like ones computer enthusiasts use, which are super cheap. This thing was like four dollars shipped off of eBay, and uh, you can get little fan controllers. So, uh, really expands what your uh, the kind of projects that you're involved in. Anyway, this is a cheesy DA tech, but it just happens to be one pretty high performance, and two, it has the weirdest startup sequence where it kind of like Starts off slow because that's what it's supposed to do and then figures out it's not connected to a computer and then ramps up and it's kind of neat. So that's kind of a neat fan. They're also a lot safer because you obviously don't have all these sharp blades as well exposed. 
and it moves quite a bit of air, but just the tone is much less. So these are really can be advantageous. The biggest Achilles heel to these fans is one, they tend to actually have a, le uh, a much less lifetime, usually 10 or 20,000 hours mean time. Like these would be 50,000 hours for many of these other box fans it would be 70. I'm not sure why that is, but they tend to have a decreased lifespan, one. And two, they don't handle dusty environments very well at all. All these fine blades just get clogged up extremely fast. You're always having to maintain these. But since they have a lot of vacuum, they work great with the filter. Here's this big 150 millimeter AVC. So this would be like a middle power range. This is 1.8 amps, so about 20 watts. And they make these up, you know, 50, 60 watt versions. But this would be how about how much noise you could expect for 250 cubic feet of air a minute out of a, about a six inch hole. So, not that noisy, but still a bit of noise. Alright, I'll do just a few more fans here. Sorry this video is getting too long, but uh, I'm kind of a fan nerd. And fan nerds are, you want to talk about esoteric hobbies. Fan nerd is uh, pretty far out there in the left field. It's not even in the left field. It's like out in the stands or something. Maybe even the parking lot. <clears throat> okay, so this is the big uh, 45 watt. Actually, almost 50 watts. 3.9 amps at startup current, not running current. All amp fan nameplate current is startup current. They have to rate it like that because then you'll put too small of a power supply on it and it'll, uh, with switching power supplies, it'll just shut down. And you need it to be able to actually start up these big fans. This is one of those that you, I shouldn't be using this without a grill at all, but you make sure you have a nice firm grip. They always have like these ridges, so it's pretty easy to hold on to. And uh, just make sure you have a firm grip because, uh, and if you are going to hold one of these fans and for some reason it's slipping, it's, you got to kind of put in your head, don't try to reach out for it. If you're going to drop the fan, drop it and let it chew up on the wires. Don't try to catch it. Anyway, this is what 250 cubic feet of air a minute out of a uh, four and three quarter inch hole, 120 millimeters. This would be about as powerful as you could get at least in this thickness. And you could hear right there, it's electric brake, which is definitely pretty handy. Nice little safety feature. As you can tell, that fan is right near the point to where it can levitate itself, just to hover a little bit off the table. But as you heard, it just makes a tremendous amount of noise. This is the 92 millimeter. This is 160 cubic feet of air a minute out of about a whole three and three quarter inches. This isn't even like the best one and 92 millimeters and still is quite impressive. And then we'll do this little 60 millimeter and I'll do this little turbine one and I'll be done with all this in this extremely long video. This is 67 cubic feet of air a minute. So this little uh, 60 millimeter fan, which is like three and an eighth inches, two and three eighths, excuse me. I was badly off there. Uh, still, this little fan moves more air than the average home uh, bathroom fan. Although a bit noisier, but it's way smaller than what's in your ceiling. Obviously, that would be insane to actually have that in your bathroom. But once again, this is about high performance, and that is an awesome little... Uh, Two and three eighths fan. Pretty small hole to move over 65 cubic feet of air a minute out of. All right, last fan. This little San Ace is the contra rotating, uh, 15,000 RPM. I, mean, I believe the input is like 14,700, and the output's like 15,600. Uh, incredibly, an incredible amount of noise comes out of uh, such a small diameter fan, but it does move 30 cubic feet of air a minute out of a 40 millimeter, you know, inch and a half hole.
this little sand ace um, is a extremely it's almost perfectly balanced you almost can't you almost only hear it can't even feel it running in your hand anyway i'm going to end this long video there but there's a big discussion about you know fan sizes anybody who watches this is going to be well rehearsed in different fan sizes and types and then a demonstration of airflow levels and what really is achievable so that way you can say you know i just want quieter and quieter and i have an idea that if i have a fan that's only 35 or 45 db uh that's 120 millimeter it's only going to be able to move 50 or 100 cubic feet of air a minute but if you want a high flow uh you know they're definitely available the deltas are easily the the most the easiest ones to find these are electronics for cyclers they're just about in every city uh and definitely you know ebay's your friend as well as digikey and uh you can pick and choose what you want I love these high airflow fans because they just make it easy. Whatever you use them on is going to stay real cool. A lot easier than having an undersized fan and having to buy another one and dealing with overheating. Anyway, I really appreciate everybody watching and subscribing. And if you haven't subscribed, please do. Until next time, Caddis Maximus out.